People always say that you have to have money to make money and that there's an extraordinary level of sacrifice. People always say that you have to have money to make money and that there's an extraordinary level of sacrifice on the road to success. So how is it that investors like us who didn't start out with much money and who don't rely on banks and credit, how is it that we can increase our income and build our wealth in a way that doesn't require us replacing one full-time job with another while still enjoying the things in life that matter most to us? That has always been the big question, and this podcast reveals the answers. I am Carrie Light, and this is The Investor Warrior. Hey, Warriors. Welcome back to today's episode. And with me, I have Trevor Oldham. So Trevor, thank you so much for coming on today and talking about your expertise, which is podcasting. And we are on a podcast show. So um, thank you again for coming on. Um, you guys, Trevor, Trevor actually reached out to me when he saw that I had a podcast going on. He told me what he does. I said, that sounds really interesting. I want to have you come on and talk about what it is that you do. Um, because as you guys know, I started this podcast a few months ago and, um, we, you know, we're, we're always looking for people to come on to the shows to talk about the deals that they're, where they're doing, um, because coming onto podcasts can give you a lot of credibility, um, in your local network. And what Trevor does is he actually helps real estate investors use podcasts for lead generation. So thank you again, Trevor, for coming on and speaking to us about that. Thank you, Carrie. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I look forward to speaking to your audience today. Cool. So tell us a little bit about uh, how you got started and what it is that you do for real estate investors. So really, the story started back in 2015. I was started a podcast back before really a lot of people have podcasts before people even really knew that much about the space. And it was more or less for me just to interview people. I wasn't interviewing uh, real estate investors. I was just interviewing entrepreneurs, authors that I read in books, just reaching out to them and, and wanting to talk to them. And, and that's how I sort of got started in the podcasting space. And, and fast forward two years, I realized I wasn't making any money with my podcast. So I still, I was putting a lot of time into it. So I figured why not monetize the skills I've learned? And I was doing everything for the podcast. So I found a couple of gigs, helping people to start their podcast, helping people to edit, writing their show notes came across someone that they wanted to get booked on real estate podcasts and she was a turnkey real estate investor out of LA. And I thought, well, how hard could that be? I booked this for my own show, how hard that could be to book her. Started working with her, started picking up other clients. And, and after about six months or so, I realized that it was a, a valuable service that people want to do it because people want to go on podcasts, but they don't necessarily want to do all the lead work. They don't want to do all the grunt work. And, and that's where our team you know, comes into and is able to do that. And that's really how the company got started. It was never something I expected. It's sort of just like, wow, people are willing to pay me. And then over time, and you know, I worked in a lot of different niches and I found that over the last two years or so, I really like the real estate investing space. I find real estate investors are friendly. They're great to work with. And then more often than not, they're able to get exposure for their business and see a bigger ROI on the back end. Because typically if you're a real estate investor, the more people you meet, the more you know potentially access to capital you have and when you have you know more access to capital more deals you can put together and eventually the more money you can make so i found that that niche more than any other niche happened to work the best and, and it's been something i've been loved doing and I'm working with real estate investors the last two years primarily very cool and and i'm sure right now so given like covid and last year happening where events have gotten shut down uh real estate investing associations weren't meeting uh, with each other, everything went virtual, that podcasting mm -hmm. is probably even more popular now than it was last year. Before oh, most certainly. Yeah. yeah, most certainly. I've seen, I've seen a rise in it. You know, you look at, I believe I looked at a number, um, I believe the site was List Notes and they put out a statistic and I think there was like, there was a, you know, you look at like, it's basically like a bar graph and you have like, you know, incrementally and then you look in 2020 and it's like the numbers like exponentially on the amount yeah. of podcasts that started. And I think, you know, being from home, everyone is, is able to start to start their podcast. And then also too, I think people are becoming more comfortable with podcasts to realize they can listen to them while they're working out. They can listen to them yeah. in the gym. They're, they're free content. And you can sort of, you know, when I'm at the gym, I'll listen to a like an hour and a half podcast. I'll listen to 45 minutes today. I'll listen to 45 minutes tomorrow. And I think people find the content a little bit better and they don't have to pay anything for it. And they're able to get some great knowledge from it. 
Right. Yeah. So I call it net. Well, Tony Robbins calls it net time where you're, you, if you're mm -hmm. doing something mindless, like you're doing the dishes or you're working out, like always be feeding your, your mind with good food. And so my go-to is podcasts because I have, sometimes I have a hard time uh, following along with audiobooks when I'm doing something, but mm -hmm. podcasts I can get really into. And like you said, like a 45 minute podcast I can do while I'm working out. So I've always been a huge fan of podcasts. Tell, tell us a little bit like, so you've been in the podcast space since 2013 and it was relatively new then, mm -hmm. but it's still relatively new in terms of using it, using it for marketing, wouldn't you say? I would say so. Yeah. So, I mean, how many podcasts are there out there right now? I think I heard a statistic like 900. Yeah, I think it, we just reached the million million mark um, a couple of days ago. But I mean, we have a million. It doesn't necessarily mean all million are created equal. Well, I think a lot of people have this notion of going out there and starting a podcast and they think it's going to be easy work. They think it's going to get brand exposure for their business right away. And they don't necessarily realize how much work it is. And I think there's like a statistic. It's like 90% of podcasts never get past their 10th episode of publishing. So if you're looking for like a get quick fix and, and to, to make money and, and to monetize your podcast right away, it may not be a fit. But if you want to play the long term, if you're looking to build a reputable brand, then podcasting may be a fit. And I, we're starting to see that just as many podcasts are starting, maybe just, you know, less, not as many, but quite a few are dropping off. And I think it is, again, that reason people think it, it is easy to do and they don't realize like anything else, you know, like the more you put into it, the more you're going to get out of it. Okay. So tell me, like, how do you uh, help real estate investors you use podcasting specifically for lead generation? So basically what we do is we just put real estate investors on podcasts so that they can go on these shows and then they can talk to their target audience. So like, let's say if you're a multifamily syndicator, we're going to put you on multifamily podcasts. If you're a mobile home park investor, we're going to put you on other mobile home park podcasts, self storage and, and then so on. And really the goal is to help real estate investors to put them on these shows where their audience is already going to be listening to. And you may get someone that's listening to a multifamily syndication episode and all of a sudden they're interested in partnering with you or they just happen to like what you do. They don't, then they want to just invest with you. They don't want to, you know, they don't want to do any of the work that comes with real estate investing. They just want to give you 50K or 100K. They like your story. They like your offering and they just give you that money. And, and that's really what we're finding with real estate investors being able to lead generate because a lot of times real estate investors don't necessarily know how to market themselves. And I find that by going on podcasts when they're able to actually share their story, how they started with no, you know, no houses, no units and how they built up their portfolio. We find audiences are a lot Oh, did you, like, uh, oh yeah. You keep breathing. Sorry, Trevor. You yeah, keep breathing. No worries. No worries. Sorry about that. That's okay. Uh, Can you hear me okay? Yeah. So typically it's just for real estate investors to go out there, do more exposure for their brand. And, and when they're able to do that, get a little bit more credibility as well. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So it's, what's interesting is since I started our podcast a few months ago, um, I have met potential private lenders. I've met potential equity partners. We've met um, people who are going to help us with our CRM systems, um, with the systems part of our business. Um, I've met people who are just starting out in real estate investing and they, you know, I'll ask me if they can bring me deals to partner on. So what you're saying is true, right? I've seen it just in the short span of us creating this podcast. And um, the reason why we created our podcast was really to get out there and start networking more. Um, and yes, to start building uh, more of a, a brand as we coach more and more people on real estate investing in our own coaching program. And lead generation, just like what you said, where you have new in, uh, new investors or people who want to get into the space. They hear you. They hear your story. Um, you resonate with them. And they potentially could be partners who bring you deals in their area. So what you're saying is, I mean, I've seen it already in just the short span of what we've been doing. Um, so tell me, you know, a little bit more about like what kind of investors do you work with? Is it all kinds of different real estate investors, all kinds of different niches? Oh, most certainly. We've, we've worked with, you know, pretty much every single niche. When you think of real estate, when you think of multifamily, commercial, um, self-storage, mobile home park, you know, wholesalers, flippers, and then even like sort of on the legal side, like we worked with an LLC attorney who helps set up LLCs, 1030, 
1031 exchanges, self-directed IRAs, you know, those sort of people. And we really worked on every niche and we found that <clears throat> almost every niche in the real estate space has been able to have success, but more often than not, it comes down to make sure that they're targeting the right person. Cause you know, you might have, let's say a show such as Joe Fairless and he's targeting multifamily syndicators or commercial real estate investors. You know, if we put a house flipper on that show, yeah, it might get great exposure for his brand, but it may not lead to anything directly where if he's a house flipper and he has a coaching program, we put him on house flipper shows, you know, yes, they may not be as big, but if they're his direct target audience, then it's going to work a little bit better for him. And he's probably going to see a little bit better on the ROI that he gets on the back end. Got it. So when I first started out, I wish I knew more about podcasting because I think, like you said, uh, real estate investors are always willing to have you on as a guest. If you want to talk real estate, like, we just like to talk real estate, mm -hmm. right? And we like to mm -hmm. talk real estate with other people who are in that niche. And so we've had lots of people reach out to me who, you know, want to be on the show. Um, but when I first started out, you know, doing my first deal, um, I wish I had a podcast, right? To get that first deal out, to talk about it, to mm -hmm. give people the numbers, how we made profit, what we did to market to that deal, how we acquired it, how we exited it from it. Because in our industry, right, building credibility is really important um, mm -hmm. for building private, um, private funds, um, having more partners on your team, building your power team, right? It's all about credibility and um, building that trust with all of these different people who are gonna come into your business. And a lot of times it's just getting out there and like mm -hmm. sharing what you're doing, right? Um, and the best way to share what you're doing is by opening your mouth to speak. Exactly, and like, let's say if you're a real estate investor and let's say you, you just did your first or second deal and you don't think that you can be a podcast guest, it's most certainly doable. And there are shows that are out there for specifically for beginner real estate investors where people wanna go on that have like myself that have never done a real estate deal, but we're interested in getting started in a real estate deal. And instead of listening to some of these bigger shows out there where someone has 500 units, like that, that's just not where I'm going to be, but I want to get my first deal done. There are shows out there. Like one that always comes to mind is bigger pockets, real estate rookie. They're always bringing on people that are doing their first deal. And, and there are other beginner real estate shows out there. So even if you don't think that you have enough experience, there are shows that are looking for your experience where they're, they're going to walk through like every step of the deal that you did they're going to be able to help their audience. So whether you have, you know, very little experience or you're very experienced, I believe that there's podcasts for every sort of, you know, area within that space. Yeah. So we do something uh, uh, similar. We do deal talk, right. And we're going to start doing mm -hmm. it once a week on Fridays where we bring someone on. It could be your first deal or it could be your 200th deal, but just to get on and talk about the deal from start to finish, how you marketed it, how you acquired it, how you negotiated it, what the numbers were, kind of like deal from A to Z. Um, so it sounds very similar to, to what you're talking about and that it doesn't have, you don't have to be super experienced, this really seasoned investor. It could mm -hmm. be your very first deal that you did. Let's get on and talk about it. It could be a deal that you made a couple thousand bucks, right? It's not a huge profitable mm -hmm. deal, but there are certain aspects of the deal that everyone can learn about it. And then again, it gets you more exposure to people in your local network because um, most get most hosts, right? Like, so myself, when I go to promote that podcast, we make little teasers about it. We get their name out there. We're going to tag them. And so now they have something that they can throw out to their network. Hey guys, listen to my story. Listen to the deal mm -hmm. that I did. I was on the investor warrior podcast show and I talked about this first deal that we did. It's just like instant credibility credibility in your own network and then you get people to share it and it, it, it just expands right the the circle of influence mm -hmm. with that one podcast show that you did expands and all of a sudden and, and this is a personal example from uh, when I first got started in real estate is I did my first deal and I was in a local coaching program at the time and so on mm -hmm. on the phone we had coaching calls and I told everyone about the deal right so building credibility we did the mm -hmm. deal here's how we did it here's how we acquired it here's how we exited it and here's uh what we made on it and i had to use hard money uh mm. hard money uh for that deal because i didn't have any credibility i had no experience right i had nothing mm -hmm. to give to someone that says here here take a look at what we've done before so i had to use hard money it was very very expensive we got the second um, deal uh, locked uh, in a contract, um, under contract, pretty soon after, I think as we were selling the first deal, we got our second deal under contract. I immediately called the hard money lender and said, hey, I've got a second deal that I need funds for. 
But because I started talking about that first deal, someone in our network reached out to me and said, hey, do you need money? Because I would love to lend on your next deal. I heard about your first deal that you did. Sound like you did a great job for it being your first deal. If you ever need private funds, I would love to fund the next deal. And I was like, well, actually, I literally just put this house under contract and I was contacting the hard money lender to line up the funds. And the private lender was like, oh no, I can give you much better terms. Like cancel that hard money lender. And I did, I called the hard money lender and I said, listen, we're not gonna go with you. Um, we're gonna go with a private lender. And they were like, no, no, but you know, what? What? what is it that they're giving you? And I told them the terms and they're like, yeah, we can't come, we can't compete with those terms. So uh, mm -hmm. go with the private lender. And that's how we got started using private financing was just me getting it out there to a very small group of people about the first deal that we did. And then it just like snowballed into, um, you know, at one point I had more money than I had deals coming in <laughs> and it's a good problem to have. Um, but you don't need to be a super seasoned investor to get onto some of these shows or just get the word out there about the deals that you're doing. Um, and I'm like proof, uh, you know, and I didn't have a podcast at the time that I could, that I got that deal out to, but I didn't, you know, I just had a small local network. Imagine if now you have a podcast where you can get your story out there, you can get your deal out there and the host is sharing that information and then you can share it out to your group. And then it sits there forever, right? If the podcast mm -hmm. keeps going, the show sits there and then you can just have more and more people contact you. Exactly. That's the, that's one of the best things is once that once you do the interview or like what's once say once you start your own podcast and you put the episodes out there, then they pretty much live forever unless you know for some reason it's taken down but 99.9% .9 of the time that it typically is never going to happen which is nice like let's say if you did have someone come to you and they say oh you know like you mentioned like a private money or a hard money lender and they want to know your track record well you can say here you know i'm just doing my second deal but here's the first deal that i did i did it on this episode you know it's probably gonna go a little bit more in depth than me just writing a simple email to you and then you point them to that and then all of a sudden they listen to you know the interview now you got credibility and it opens up those doors for connections that you you probably wouldn't have been able to do um, prior yeah. So what would you say to someone who's like, should I just get on podcast shows and talk or should I start my own podcast show? I would say if you have the time, then it's worth starting your own show. Because I, if you if you have the budget, then you could definitely do your own show and you could outsource the, the labor, which can, which consists of like more or less editing the show, posting it, creating social media. But if you have the time, then feel free to do it. But if you don't have the time nor, nor the budget, then I'd probably say, you know, maybe hold off on it. But the way I look at it is when you start your own podcast, it's going to be perfect because you're going to be able to talk to real estate investors that you want to talk to, that you want to network with, where if you don't have a show, if you just send them an email and say, hey, can I pick your brain for 30 minutes? More or less, they're probably not going to want to talk to you. But if you have them on your podcast and they're seeing the value in it by you sharing them with your audience then and to work with you and that sort of thing. And then on the podcast guesting side, it's just more or less if you don't necessarily want to do all the work of starting your own show, then you're able to go out there and take advantage of other people's show by being a guest on, and then that audience is, is going to be able to hear you. So I think it's a little combination of both. I would say we work with a lot of real estate investors that have their own show, and then they also go on other people's shows. And then just as many, they, they don't have an interest in starting their own show. They just don't want to have the time commitment to it, and they just want to go on other people's shows. So it really just comes down to what do you – what you're looking for the you know, when you start your own show the more exposure you're going to get for your brand and you kind of multiply that when you guest on other people's shows so i think it's a combination of both but really it just comes down to what's your time commitment what does your budget look like what do you what do you want to do because i'm certain as a real estate investor you probably don't want to spend every single week editing a podcast creating social media snippets you'd probably you probably want to outsource it so it really just comes down to like what is your time and budget looks looks like because if you do have time but you don't have the budget then feel free to do it if you have both you know it's uh it's perfect so it really just comes down to what you're what you're looking to do and again if you're going out there and, and starting your own podcast you want to make sure that it's professional you don't want to just go out there and just you know you throw one episode out there on on itunes and spotify and then they, people don't hear from you for a month so you know you have to take it serious and like anything else again what you put into it is what you get out of it. So just ensuring that all right, if you're starting a podcast, you're going to be in it for the long haul because it could take six to 12 months or yeah. longer to see some people resonating with it from people to find. You know, so it's, you sort of have to play the long game with it and to make sure that, that you're comfortable with that. If you're putting an episode out every single week, even if no one hears you, 
it might take a year, but once you do hit that year mark, then it'll, it'll be very great for you. Yeah, I will say that I, I wasn't sure what it was, what I was getting myself into when I started the podcast. And I really had no intention of starting a podcast this year until I went to a real estate investing coaching conference. It was a conference for coaches and they were talking a lot about the podcast space. And I came out of that event. I'm all like, oh my gosh, I need to start a podcast because I have a passion for helping other people get into real estate investing and educating people about real estate investing. But, you know, it can be very time consuming when you're doing it on a one to one basis. And so my my first thought was, oh, my gosh, this is a way for me to just start getting out there and talking to people about real estate investing and what we do and how how we help others. And now it's one to many. Right. And it's free yeah. it's free for people to listen to. But um, I did not realize how much work was going to go into it. And I'm so glad <laughs> yeah. that it was a little bit like you had to get I had to get over that hump of like, mm -hmm. OK, like getting the artwork and getting the music and the intro and now getting people to come on where it's not just me talking all the time because we did a couple of solo shows and then I wanted other people to come on. So I would say that it took like a good eight weeks before we even launched the podcast. Mm -hmm. And then once we launched it, it was a little bit slow going. And now that we've been doing it for, um, for a few months, like I said, I have more and more people that want to come on. We've now started doing um, deal talk. People have reached out to me with, um, you know, if I ever need private uh, lending or if I ever want to partner with a, a deal that they have that they don't know how to put together. And so it has taken, I would say that event was in October. It's been, it's taken since October to now see this snowball effect mm -hmm. that this podcast is having. And I've been having fun doing it, but it was, <laughs> it was a lot of work um, up front. Yeah, I think that's some, something people might not expect. But like you mentioned, like it's it may be a lot of work up front. But then once you do do all that back end work of getting your artwork of of starting to record your episodes, and once you get you know all of that up upfront work where you mentioned took you about eight weeks, then it becomes a little bit easier because then you you put out you know one to two episodes per week. It's I think it's crazy when some of these podcasts hosts put out an episode per day. That's <laughs> that seems like a a lot of work. But you know you you don't have to do that. You can put it. You know I typically would say if you're starting your show, you want to be consistent by putting out one episode per week. And then if you want to go above and beyond that, then that's perfect. But really, as you mentioned, Carrie, it's really just a lot of that upfront work that you're going out there and then doing. And then once you do all that upfront work, then it becomes a little bit easier. And then let's say if you just want to record your interviews once a month or twice a month and you set it across certain days where you're only going to do podcast interviews, then you, you know, you save some time on your end and it makes the process a little bit easier. Yeah. And, and I will say too, since we started the podcast, um, now going out and speaking to sellers, if a seller uh, or a homeowner has a question or they want to find out more information about how this particular transaction is going to work, or they want to know a little bit more about me, I have referred a few of our uh, homeowners or sellers to like specific episodes, right? Oh, mm -hmm. go on to um, my podcast, The Investor Warrior, episode two, where we talk about what owner financing is and how it works. And number one, again, that's going to build credibility that you're out there, you know what you're doing. Um, mm -hmm. Number two, it's just like, just go here. Here's all the information. Um, if you know, if you want to get more information on it, um, so not only have I used it for connecting with other real estate investors, but I also have used the podcast um, to talk to sellers and homeowners that mm. I'm working with where we might be doing some creative financing, right? Where, um, and, and so let's reverse that. So let's say you don't wanna start your own podcast, but you wanna go on to some shows to talk about the deal that you just did. And let's say this was a deal where you used creative financing, like owner financing, and you talked through the entire deal about how um, you uh, you got it under contract. And a lot of that is educating the homeowner on how the mm -hmm. owner financing works, right? And uh, how it's going to meet their needs. And so now you can take, you know, you've done an episode on someone's show. And a lot of times the host will send you a link to that show, mm -hmm. right? And so now if you're talking to another homeowner and you're talking about creative financing where you might want to do uh, owner financing with them and they're like, well, you know, let me think about it. Oh, great. Perfect. Well, in the meantime, I have this episode that I did where we did another deal just like this, where we would be setting it up the same way. 
just head on over, click the link, you can hear that story. And again, now it's just building trust and credibility with the homeowner, because you're now talking about the deal that you just did very similar to the deal that you might be doing with them. Exactly. And we see that even, you know, when you talk about deals, we even see people in the wholesaling space where they're going out and they have a website set up like a bandit website where people are coming on and they're looking to sell their house. We find a lot of wholesalers and flippers, they're putting links to their interviews that they do and their process and how they help homeowners and they put it yeah. on their website and they're finding they're getting a lot of credibility from these distressed sellers that want to sell their property to them that the you know that property might be very sentimental to them and it might be a little bit harder for them to sell but then they're able to to pull a little bit more from the bio by listening to the person's interview and it gives them a little bit more credibility and it's been able to increase their close rate that they have on getting people to sell their property just by again giving them that little bit more credibility than just having the standard bio that's on your website. Yeah, Trevor, it's so crazy. So I have um, a homeowner that we've worked with. We've bought, I think we've done two. Um, she's a real estate investor. She's been a real estate investor mm -hmm. since she was like in her thirties and she's now in her nineties and she still invests in real estate. And we've uh, known each other now for years because I bought one of her rental properties from her. And then I wholesaled um, a piece of land for her uh, that she was trying to get rid of. And so a few months ago I said, can I, can I interview you? Like, I would just love to interview you. You're 90 years old. You're still investing in real estate. You and I have done deals together where you were the homeowner and I was the buyer. And so I would love to just like interview you, your story about who you are, what kind of wisdom you can share with our listeners, right? And I haven't released that episode yet because there's there's a lot of editing with that one. <laughs> um, <laughs> it went very, very long, but it's because her and I will sit there and talk forever about real estate and she's just had such an amazing, interesting life. But now I have this episode where I actually had a homeowner, a seller come on to talk to me, right? And now I have mm -hmm. this, so that I can share out again, that just builds so much credibility and so much trust when I'm working with other homeowners, right? Because now they see that I'm even interviewing people who they've worked, who I've worked with in the past, um, other sellers who I've worked with. So I can't like stress enough, like how many people you can connect with on the podcast, private lenders, potential partners, sellers, buyers, right? Like it's pretty limitless how many people you can connect with when you get onto podcast show, shows just to share your story. Oh, most certainly. There's like, as you mentioned, there's so many people that you can connect with people that are going to be able to help you. And then even p p potential people, not so much mentor you, but let's say you, you find someone on a podcast or you listen to them or they have you on their show or you have them on your show, however that may be. And then you have a question about a deal that you're putting together and then you reach out to them for their advice and then they share it with you. So then you sort of build up a network instead of you sort of going at it alone and you get to learn from their mistakes, which is sometimes we see as well where people are looking to, to invest in a new space that they've never done before. And they go on a show, the host is, you know, fairly certain in that one area, such as like, let's say mobile home park investing. We have a multifamily syndicator and they want to be able to meet that person. We put them on their show, sort of spin it in a good way for their audience. And then they're able to meet them and talk to them and then answer questions about investing in that specific space. It also sort of helps with the, for the mentorship to the people that are, again, a little bit more beginners and maybe don't need as much, that need a little bit more guidance than someone that's a little bit more. Yep, you froze again, are you there? Yep, I'm here. Okay, um, yeah, no, absolutely. So you are basically, your expertise is you broker basically a podcast host mm -hmm. and someone who wants to get on a podcast show, right? Yep, exactly. Got it. So what would be your advice for someone? So I get this a lot. So I'm curious to see what your answer is. Um, what would be your advice for someone who wants to get out there and start talking about their deal, but they don't know if they feel like comfortable getting onto a podcast, like they've never done a show before. They've never gotten out into the world and talked on a show. Because I know the first time I went on a show, I was super, super nervous about it. Um, mm -hmm. And that can be kind of intimidating for someone who thinks they want to dip their toe into this field of podcasting but they're, they're a little nervous about it. So I typically recommend what's called the piggyback method. And it's just starting off with a smaller show. And then once you feel comfortable, you go to the medium size shows. And then once you feel comfortable, you can try to get yourself on the larger shows. And what I mean by a smaller show is there's a tool that you can use. It's called Listen Notes. 
and using listen notes, you can go on and you can research podcasts. And the cool thing is you can filter by the number of episodes. So if you are just wanting to go out there and you want to see if podcasts are a right fit for you, you can filter by podcasts that have between five and 15 episodes published. So they're going to be a little bit newer of a show, probably not that not too many people are going to be listening to them. And those are the certain types of shows that you could be pitching yourself to. There's probably not that many people trying to get on this show. So you, you're probably going to have a greater success rate of going on that show. And then plus, because it is smaller, you can, f- you can find out if you enjoy podcasting, because if you mess up, probably not that many people are going to be listening to it. Plus, it helps you develop your story. And then once you do a couple of the small shows, you feel comfortable, then you can start to go to the shows that are more well-established, that have been around for a little bit longer. And that's what I typically recommend, because I think going out there, and if you've never been on a podcast, it's probably going to be intimidating. You wonder how it's going to go. You wonder if your mic's going to work, if your lighting is going to work, you know, you know, what are the questions that are going to be asked of you. And just by starting on those smaller shows, it's going to allow you to feel more comfortable. So eventually you can make the jump to those bigger shows. And that's typically what I recommend is using listen notes, just doing some research on your own, finding those shows that are, you know, starting out maybe a month or two old, because again, it's going to be a little bit easier to get on those shows and it'll help you to feel more comfortable before you go out and, and try to get on those more well-established shows. Yeah. Great advice. So you guys, if you want to come on to the investor warrior, I'll have you on for deal talk. That's <laughs> the first little intro into the podcast world. If you like it, if you feel comfortable, then I'm going to send you over to Trevor and get you out everywhere. So <laughs> You've never been on a podcast and you want to come on to a fun podcast show, you can come on to ours, right? Practice on ours, do deal talk. We can talk about your first deal or the last deal that you did and um, and we'll have fun with it. And I'm, I'm telling you, the more you get on podcasts and the more you start to sharing your story, um, it's fun. As long as you're genuine mm-hmm. and as long as um, you just, you know, I don't like to hold back, right? I like to tell everyone um be honest and and um be candid with people and just be very genuine it can it can be really really fun just to share your story and what you've been doing and um it can also help a lot of people right it 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 can help a lot of people to hear your story because you can answer questions that they've had along the way so it's interesting that i just said that because someone steve rutherford asks so you can get hard money on your first deal with no experience now, I just shared a story. That's all I did. I shared a story <laughs> about my first deal, how I had absolutely no um, experience and I got a hard money loan. And so someone is already asking me a question, right? I, I just, mm. um, I sparked some, someone's uh, curiosity with just a story that I was telling. So Steve, yes, you can get hard money on your first deal <laughs> with no experience. Uh, a lot of times the hard money lenders are looking at credit scores now. Back eight years ago, it was a little bit different, I think, but um, most of the time hard money lenders are basing on asset, not person. It does have, uh, it's helpful to have experience uh, because you do usually get better terms on hard money uh, when you're a seasoned investor versus a first time investor. So that that first deal that I did, <laughs> oh my gosh, I paid, I think, I don't know. I don't know the exact terms, but it was a very high interest rate. It was a lot of points. There were a lot of fees and it was because it was my first <laughs> <laughs> so I was so grateful when I started sharing my story about that first deal. And all of a sudden, someone was like, that sounds like a great deal. I want to lend on the next deal. I can give you much better terms. And that started my journey into private lending, which is much different than hard money lending. But yeah, when you're first starting out, hard money is um, available. If you've never done a first deal, uh, you typically use, uh, have to have a minimum credit score. And um, the numbers have to make sense, obviously, for the lender, for the asset. So just a great example of just sharing your story (laughs) helps other people to (laughs) get questions answered. (laughs) So thank you, Steve. Now I'm going to have to have a podcast show about hard money lending versus private lending. Uh, Just gives me ideas. Um, Okay, so Trevor, uh, where can people reach you if they want to reach out to you for more information? Sure. So they go to podcastingu.com slash real estate investors. And there, if they're interested in getting booked on shows, they can fill out a form and then you'll be taken to a calendar. And then they'll basically hop on a call with myself. I'll basically dig into your business, see what you want to do, see if it makes sense for where you're at and have a, have a nice conversation like we are, like we're having today and see if it makes sense. Okay, cool. And you offer a free consultation. Is that correct? Yep. Yep. Correct. A free, a free consultation. Okay, perfect. And like I said, you guys, if you want to practice, if you're like not sure yet, 
if you want to get on podcasting, but you've done a deal recently, I would welcome you to contact me, get onto Deal Talk, do your first podcast show. And if you think that it's something for you, um, then Trevor is a perfect person to reach out to to start getting you connected with other podcast hosts, right? It's all about connecting mm -hmm. in the podcast world. Uh, I can't tell you how many podcasts I have been on where I'm promoting their podcast and then they get on my podcast where they promote <laughs> theirs. Um, it's just such a great connection uh, connector tool, you guys. So before we leave, Trevor, any other words of advice in the podcasting world when it comes to real estate investing and lead generation? I would say the biggest thing, just put yourself out there, especially if you've never been on a show. It's going to be intimidating. You're going to be nervous, but I guarantee you, once you get to the fifth, tenth interview, you're going to become comfortable. It's going to become natural. So if you're afraid, if you think you want to do it, just go out there, put yourself on the first interview. As you mentioned, Carrie is offering anyone that has, let's say, one deal under their belt, you know, feel free to reach out to her and she's going to have you on and just start with her and, and go on her show. And I guarantee you, the more that you put yourself out there, the more lead generation you're going to get, plus the more comfortable that you're going to get. So just go out there and just start. Very cool. All right. Well, thank you so much, Trevor, for coming on. This is all good stuff. This has given me some ideas for our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so I thank you for that. And um, I'd love to have you on uh, again. Perfect. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, you guys take care. We'll see you on the next episode. And remember, you are only one deal away.